Good evening, and welcome to the Planning Commission of the City of Moreno Valley. I now call this meeting to order on November 14th, uh, November 14th, 2019, at 7:02 p.m. Uh, may we have a roll call, please? Commissioner Brugueras. Here. Commissioner Steven. Present. Commissioner Harris. Here. Commissioner Dijonay. Here. Commissioner Corsick. Present. Vice Chairperson Baker. Here. Chairperson Sims. Here. Uh, please uh, stand, face the flag, and uh, Commissioner Stevens, lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We're now going uh, to move uh, the approval of the agenda. Do we have a motion? I'll move to approve the agenda submitted. Okay, we do have a second. second. Okay, we have a first and a second. Please cast your vote. All right, we have a 7-0. Okay. So this is regarding public comments. Any person wishing to address the commission on any matter, either under the public comment section of the agenda or scheduled items or public hearings, must fill out a request to speak form available at the door. The completed form must be called, must be submitted to the secretary prior to the agenda item being called by the chairperson. In speaking to the commission, member of the public may be limited to three minutes per person, except for the applicant for entitlement. The commission may establish an overall time limit for comments on a particular agenda item. Members of the public must direct their questions to the chairperson of the commission and not to the members of the commission, the applicant, the staff, or the audience. The next item <coughs> is uh, public comments on any item not on the agenda. So are there any speakers tonight? No, sir. Okay. Next item is uh, approval of the consent cal calendar, and that would be the only thing on that is the minutes um, from the October 24th, 2019 meeting. Need a motion. Need a motion. Second. Um, I'll move to accept the uh, minutes as submitted. Okay. Second. Second. Okay, we have a first and a second. Please uh, cast your vote. Can you please clarify the seconder? Oh, uh, Rafael Burgos. Okay, that motion passed 7 0. Okay, the next item on the agenda agenda is a public hearing item, and that is um, item number one, which is a conditional use permit for Canaporium, a cannabis micro business. Can we have the staff report, please? Yes, thank you. Um, Chair Sims and members of the Planning Commission, I'm Julia Dakota, and I'm the project planner. And the item before you tonight has been continued from the October 24th, 2019 hearing. Uh, where we continued it because we didn't have the ALUC uh, Airport Land Use Commission consistency letter, which we now have. And so we're bringing this item back to you. If you remember, we had already done the public hearing, but I'll go ahead and do a brief report just so everybody knows what we're, we're talking about. The applicant is requesting the approval of a conditional use permit to allow a cannabis micro business located at 24685 Alessandro Boulevard in the existing shopping center. It'll be approximately 26,678 <coughs> square feet. And the um, project is in the community commercial zone, which um, the properties next to it are also zoned um, community commercial with R5, residential five on the north and the south of the project. And um, this business has uh, four um, operations in it. It will have cultivation, manufacturing, retail dispensary, and distribution. The cannabis cultivation will be all grown indoors, so there'll be nothing outdoors. It's all organic, pesticide, and herbicide free. 
Um, it's a hydrophonic cultivation system with a soil blend and does not charge any waste into the um, neighborhood or the irrigation system. Um, the manufacturing will use non-volatile, non-combustible equipment. And the distribution, they can distribute products from this facility to other um, facilities as well as their own uh, retail establishment that they'll have here as well. Um, with that, staff recommends um, that the Planning Commission approve Resolution 2019-36 and recommend <coughs> that was supposed to be changed, um, that the Planning Commission approve the resolution and certify that the product project is categorically exempt and approve the conditional use permit. If you have any questions, um, I'm here to answer them for you and the applicant is here as well. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, does the uh, commissioners have any, I, we did go over this um, fairly uh, in depth in depth on the last, at the last meeting, that, but um, certainly it's, we have time for more questions of staff. Hearing none, do, do, would the applicant, uh, does the applicant have anything that they would uh, like to add? <coughs> Are there any questions that the commissioners have of the applicant? All right. I have okay. I noticed that there wasn't, um, I know we've um, approved quite a few of these, and a lot of them have what they call a man trap when they first go into the building. Is this one going to have a man trap before you enter? It's almost, I believe, a, a room you go into from the entrance. We we have a condition of approval where uh, we're still working with the applicant on the accessibility um, from the front. So um, we'll be working with them on the, the floor plan. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, uh, oh, go ahead, Robert. So that will be one of the conditions of approval? Well, it's not a state requirement um, that they have that. So we're going to be working with the applicant to make sure that it's secure and that it meets all of the objectives of the state law and our municipal code. Mr. Chair, if I could clarify, it doesn't have to be a man trap, but we are requesting, we're requiring a controlled entry. Yeah, and I, I think we, at the last meeting, we don't want to get too much into the security right. and, and whatnot. That's a proprietary for each and it. I know, but since we do live here and we are residents, I kind of want, you know, paramount safety for the residents. That's my concern. Any other comments, questions that we need to ask of applicant or staff? Okay, is there, uh, do we have any uh, um, public comments on this item? No, sir. Okay, well then at that, I will uh, close, close the public hearing and move on to deliberations between uh, commissioners. So we're deliberating now. Or a motion. I'll go, I'll go first. <laughs> okay. The good thing about it, I had, I had a second chance to look at the staff report because I do have my first one. So I was able to match and look to see if there's any difference. And, um, and I'm glad there wasn't. And I'm glad that I was able to really look at it well to make sure as our fellow commissioners want in our city of safety and care. So I thank the staff for, for the report. I thank, for the, I thank them for the, you know, the federal law, state laws, and our city regulations. And um, again, on page four, my, um, package 10, I look at the safety security plan, and um, I found something interesting for me to help me understand what the staff has put on the report and what the applicant is going to apply uh, a bye-bye in the conditions. And is on page five, number 11, paragraph. And it talks about the safety security plan ensures safety for both customers and, and employees, okay? 
But it's the middle that really I like hearing and reading. The video surveillance on the exterior of the building will recall all activities in the parking lot and the sur surrounding the surrounding the, su the dispensary. The condition of approval requires that the applicant to provide all videos to police and fire. That's very important that we be able to solve crimes. I need that to be an insurance in our city, and I'm glad that the staff put that there. And then the other one is the order, the order, and then um, a few things in the condition um, that um, that I was able to um, to help with that. Um, as we call it the man cave, but I'm glad that it's in here and is on um, number 61. And it, um, it I'm sorry, um, where did I put my, my, my notes that I just had? Uh, I just lost them talking to them. But it's on page um, 61, I mean on page um, 56 and number 51. And prior to approval, the plans, the applicant shall submit plans detailing provision for control and safety and secure assets in, into and out of the dispensary area. So I know that the staff is going to work with the applicant to make sure that there's a safety net that where they could go in and they show their ID and they must be 21 and over because that's the rules of the city. That's important that that's in those conditions. And the other one for me always is the fire department where they have the lock box. If there's an emergency at night and everything, they'll be able to go in and take care of the emergency. So I do like everything that the staff have put on paper for the applicant to be held accountable to. Any other uh, comments by uh, commissioners? Do we have a motion? I make a motion that we approve resolution number 2019-36. Second. Okay, we have a first by uh, Commissioner Korzak, second by uh, Commissioner Harris. Please cast your vote. It was approved 7-0. Good luck on your project. Do we have a staff wrap up? Planning Commission's action on this uh, is an appealable action. Anybody who wishes to file an appeal must do so within 15 days um, of the action. Uh, an appeal must be in writing, submitted to the Community Development Director with the appropriate fee and the specific reasons for the appeal. If we receive an appeal, the item would be agendized for the City Council's consideration. Thank you. Okay. We're moving on to item number two, <coughs> which is conditional use, pit, uh, use permit for the Good Life, a retail cannabis dispensary. So can we have the staff report for this, please? Uh, the staff report will be presented by Planner Jerry Garcino. Good evening, Chairman, members of the Planning Commission. Uh, tonight I'll be presenting the staff report for um, conditional use permit number 19-0094. It's for a commercial cannabis use called the Good Life. Um, there we go. The project is located in um, the ground floor portion of a two-story commercial office building uh, on the north side of Sunny Mead Boulevard and just um, a little bit east of Back Way. Um, the site is uh, addressed at 24384 Sunny Mead Boulevard. The site's located within the um, 
village specific plan SP 204 and more specific, specifically within the village commercial and retail district which allows for cannabis distribution uh, with a conditional use permit. <coughs> Access to the site is provided by a driveway on Sunnymead Boulevard. Uh, it accesses parking both in the front and rear of the building. A secondary emergency access is available to the alley at the rear. The site uh, provides 38 parking spaces for the tenants uh, within the building, including the dispensary. A uh, parking study was done for this project and determined that 38 spaces was adequate to provide parking uh, for uh, the needs of all the tenants, uh, both now and uh, future tenants uh, within the building. The use uh, will occupy a total of 2,145 square feet, including a dramatic lobby and retail space and secured backroom space for storage and management of the site. Staff recommends that the Planning Commission approve resolution 2019-41 and thereby certify that the CUP is categorically exempt under CEQA and approve the conditional use permit according to the conditions that are attached. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer those. Uh, I will point out that the uh, resolution before you will be updated uh, prior to um, signature if you approve it this evening. There was uh, a few typos that were noticed and they'll be corrected in the final version that you'll receive. And we have had one caller, uh, Tom uh, Gerley, uh, site manager for um, the Sundance Center. Thank you. Um, this is uh, time for commissioner questions. I, I did have one. I, I did look through the, I saw the, uh, the traffic uh, parking study analysis. So I, <clears throat> mine's more of a process question. I, I, I understood the report. So it's more of a question is, is, is that there was a standard parking analysis utilizing the municipal code parking requirements. And then there's this alternate one based on, you know, putting eyes out in the parking lot, counting cars and looking at peak times and all that stuff. So my only question is, is I, I, I don't have a problem with the recommendations from the traffic engineer coming up with 38 is good. But from a process standpoint, if we're, we're deviating from the, if I, if I recall 41 would have been a requirement for the, per the municipal code, isn't there, is there a requirement or how do we move away from, providing a variance from the municipal code, is there, a, is there, a, or is it just done administratively? That's the question. Yes, the, the way the code is written, it does allow for discretion uh, with the benefit of a parking study to um, provide documentation um, of adequate parking for the tenant use. Uh, so it, this isn't um, a situation where you'd need to approve a variance the code already allows for consideration of, of a, a site-specific parking study uh, and uh, allows the Planning Commission to approve projects based on the findings of that parking study uh, or obviously the, the specific number that's um, listed in the code. So the code has that built-in flexibility. Okay, thank you. Thank you for the clarification. And I think it's important folks that if they do watch this stuff here that you know when there is that that there is adequate there is um, would the, the leeway or the the uh, ability to make modifications with uh, appropriate study or analysis so uh, any other questions of commissioners of this of staff I have one commissioner I drove by there yesterday, and um, on the on the building itself, it has security cameras. Okay. Now, does the applicant ha has to put their own surveillance? In also, yes. Okay, okay. Thank you. Any other questions, staff? Okay. Thank you. Uh, well, if the applicant would like to uh, um, speak, now's the time.
Good evening, Commission. My name is Christopher Henry, and uh, I just wanted to take a moment to say thank you uh, for reviewing our project, looking at it. Um, if there's any questions or concerns that come about throughout the process of us um, building out this facility and um, coming into operation, definitely engage us. We're your partner um, in the city, and we would like to engage you on all, all aspects of the project and the cannabis industry as a whole. Um, again, we appreciate your time tonight and allowing us to present this and um, hopefully we can get an approval. Okay, uh, thank you. Is, do we have uh, questions from the commissioners of the applicant? Commissioner Harris. Um, this, uh, this kitchen, is it a commercial kitchen for edibles? No. No, the, this no. is just for, for staff and correct work. just for break room staff okay. Um, okay. lunch okay. things of that sort thank you I didn't see uh, a waiting area for the for the customers okay so if you look at the plan upon the entry point where the double doors are at the front um that is kind of our waiting area so you would enter the facility through those double doors and the two um stations that you see around the round area would be your check-in area that's all kind of a secured area before you pass into the actual dispensing part of the facility um, that is really our holding area our, our, our ideal um, plan of operation is to be able to get them in check their IDs check them into the facility and get them behind closed doors into the secure area and out of the building as fast as possible um, so you won't see too much seating or interactive area within that lobby area just because of our, our, our protocols um, for safety reasons so they'll be buzzed in after they get cleared Yes, once they're cleared, then they can be buzzed into the back side of the facility to view and purchase as, as they would like. New business. Correct. Uh, I mentioned the uh, security cameras that they already have in the building. Yes. So you'll be supplying your own. Yes, we will be supplying um, uh, HD, uh, above HD, they are ultra HD cameras um, that will secure the facility inside and out. Um, a total of 32 plus cameras will be installed in the building, which will integrate into your system um, via a Hitachi gateway system. Um, so we'll, we'll, meet, we'll meet your requirements, we'll Thank exceed you. your requirements. I want to keep the security part private. Yes, I know, yes. I know. Thank you for the amount, but I just want to know that you're going to put your own. That's the main thing. That absolutely, I absolutely. You, And the glass, the windows, uh, are there going to be any windows that where people, because I saw some. Okay, so there's uh, no windows, but we have a net. So there's kind of a see-through netting area um, that is very secured. Think of this as, uh, as if you're in a casino, right? And you go up to the cashier window and you see the gates that kind of secure there where the cash management in, is and whatnot. We don't want it to be too cumbersome, um, but very inviting. So what we've done is kind of a see-through netting um, that's very secured that you can see back and forth. You can see customer interaction, security guards are able to see the interaction of the clients um, as they come into the facility and exit the facility, um, but there's no glass uh, in, those, in those particular areas. Thank you. Other uh, questions? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Commission. Okay. So at this time, we'll now take public comment. Do, do we have, uh, I see uh, Mr. Gerald is on the- uh, uh, Yes, sir. Speakers, speaker list. Thank you, Chair Sims, Vice Chair Baker, Commissioners, and members of the staff and the public, both here in the chambers and watching at home on MBTV or on the internet. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to uh, speak to you. Uh, I'm Tom Gerald. I'm the site manager for the Sundance Center. We're about 300 feet or so uh, due southeast uh, of the uh, facility. And uh, on where it says for or opposed, I just put concerns. Uh, philosophically, I'm not a user of the uh, 
the bud, if you will, but uh, something the public spoke loudly on. It's been approved, the city. And then bluntly, I'm, I've talked to some of you, and I'm real, and from what I've heard and seen, uh, the city's doing a really, really good job of uh, making sure when these facilities come online that they're well regulated, well policed, uh, internally, you know, self policed. And uh, so I affirm that, and I think it's a good thing. And, uh, but my uh, million dollar question is, is simple. Um, and I had some discussion. First, I want to thank uh, Ashley. She was very courteous, as well as, well as uh, Mr. Uh, say his name right, uh, Gorosino. Did I'm saying it right? Yes. Okay, I got it. And uh, they're both very courteous and very helpful in answering some of my questions late this afternoon. But uh, given our uh, closeness, we have uh, in our center, first of all, the overall area, I don't have to tell you, is very distressed. Uh, you know, the biggest calling card I can give you is that our rents are about half of what they were in when that center opened in 1987. In fact, Dave Slauson used to be a tenant there many years ago. So, uh, you know, that the tail of the tape says a lot. Uh, the homeless problem, I don't have to tell you about it, it's just very prolific. We get rid of one regular and I get three more new ones, and <laughs> you know, literally by the day. So uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, problem behavior in the area. And my concern is simply this. What keeps people from making their purchase in a well-regulated facility such as this and uh, driving across the street, parking in our parking lot, and toking up? Uh, now, if they were to stop, get a pizza and some beer and go home, great, well, they're happily ever after. But it's that, uh, you know, should we say, secondary use that can be uh, problematic. And I had some, in my discussion uh, earlier with uh, uh, Mr. Garrosino is that uh, I said perhaps in the language, uh, I guess they hand out literature to people when they make their purchase, their signage, and indicating that it's just as illegal to imbibe off-site in a neighbor's property and so on and so forth as it would be on site. If they have on-site security, we're not going to have that direct benefit. So I don't want to make a bad situation worse. So I'm not here to fight the project. I'm saying let's, I, I'm a big believer in the principle of highest and best use. So, you know, this is, it's said the people have spoken, they've made their decision, the city's authorized these facilities, but let's make the best implementation. Let's not add to our burdens there so that three years from now I'm saying now my rents are 25 cents what they were in 1987, you know, that, that alone is very telling. And uh, it's hard to maintain properties and, you know, keep the old tugboats afloat. So those are my comments. So if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you. Do we have any, any other speakers? No, sir. Okay, thank you. Um, so with that, I will close the uh, public hearing. Um, I guess I, if there, uh, can we ask the applicant to come out and address that, uh, address Mr. Gerald's concerns? Uh, Mr. Gerald, I appreciate your concerns. Um, it's a concern of ours as well. And um, as we operated in other cities, um, it is a concern of the public in general. Um, how we like to deal with that is through education of um, our customers. Um, as they come in, uh, part of our policies and procedures are to educate them that there's no consumption within our site or within public areas or right-of-ways of the city. Um, we stress to all of our customers that all consumption has to happen in a private authorized um, facility or home. Um, so it's, it's the way that we deal with it is through education. Uh, we want to work hand in hand with the community. So if there's a way that anybody feels that we can better address these issues, definitely bring it to our attention. Uh, we're going to be putting together a community development program to implement um, policies and procedures throughout the community and engage the, the community as a whole to help us regulate within. Um, so we, uh, we, we welcome any questions or any um, recommendations from the public that can help us do our job better. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we've heard uh, <laughs> the staff report, heard public testimony, um, just time to deliberate on this, uh, on this case. So it's open for deliberations. Okay, <laughs> I'll go first again. Um, once again, i grateful for the staff to bring the, the case and to look at all the things that bring safety first 
and care second. Because you got to have safety so you can have care. So I'm also glad to hear that Epic can come up and just Mr. Gerald's concerns. Very important to know that they're willing to uh, educate their customers. Very important. I'm glad that I heard, I heard that tonight. Again, I like the building where it's going to be at. There's plenty of parking. Um, I'm glad there's going to be security, armed. Also, I read that, and um, I wish that every center did have a guard, but again, that's private to each owner. But I'm glad that this center is going to have armed guards and, and regular security guards day and night during the operation business. And, um, and I hope it goes well for him and, um, and, the, and the community and the surrounding businesses. I hope they all work together to um, make sure that the customer goes home to their own private place so no one gets injured. That's important. Thank you. You know, I, I, we've seen a pile of these come through, dispensaries, micro business, cultivation. So I guess I have a question is, is, is have any of these legal ones that we've actually have gone through the process, have, have, have we gotten any of them, actually, is anybody open and running for business yet? Not yet. We do have some going through the building permit process right now who are probably fairly close, but we don't have anybody who's actually taken occupancy or received a, uh, an occupancy permit yet. Yeah. And we've given final approval to the state on <coughs> the, probably a handful of them that have gotten their last approvals from our office that they've finished the process with us. So there's, there's probably a handful that are right on the cusp. Yeah. So, I mean, some of this stuff, you know, it's... I mean, like what Mr. Gerald's mentioned. I mean, that's a that's a that's a that's a big issue. The whole, you know, there's there's more to that than uh, than just this. But anyhow, um, I, it, you know, from a deliberating standpoint, the the thing I this this is, seems like a kind of a new business adventure for the city and getting into. Uh, approving these things and, and whatnot because, you know, it, it, it is a partnership because there's revenue that will generate to the city, you know, someplace. So in the city has come up with strict regulations and it seems from what we've heard time and again with these reports that they're fully well thought out. I think the proof is going to be in the pudding after we see some of these actually, you know, up and running and seeing kind of the how they actually function in, in these different places. So, but the good thing is, is these are all conditional use permits. So if I understand a conditional use permit, I don't know what the process is, if these ever go sideways on us, but what the, if it's a, if it's a revocation or how, how does that work? So if there were issues or concerns uh, through code enforcement or planning or PD or whatever, uh, they would bring them to planning staff. Um, they would be, try to be addressed initially with the holder of the permit, uh, but um, if they were severe enough or warranted a change of their conditions or a possible revocation of the permit, it would come back to this body for a hearing on that revocation. So it's so kind of, and maybe this is off track, but it, in, you can tell me to shut up. <laughs> wait, wait, Never tell you. I will. <laughs> but it, it, this from an educational standpoint, so if, if, if not this particular uh, applicant, but one of these there's I, I can't seven. seven that are already have the conditional use in there there and something goes bad is it is it generally does is it an administrative process through code enforcement that escalates into or it could come from a criminal criminal side on the on the with the PD could come from I, either source depending on the nature of what that violation is it could be building and fire issues it could be operational issues which would come through could probably likely to be investigated by code enforcement or it could be as you said criminal aspects that that PDs encountered regardless of, uh, of where that case might initiate um, it would it would ultimately if it became a revocation or a modification even of those conditions would ultimately become a new public hearing here to which this body would make the decision and then the same appeal process would attach uh, to, to whatever that 
decision was. But yes, uh, it could be either revoked or modified depending on the nature of the concern. Okay. Well, thank you for the clarification. I appreciate it. My question is that uh, I know that we have the, the, the code enforcement, um, law enforcement that regulates the, the, the uh, dispensaries and micro businesses. Um, and I don't know if you could field this question, but is there a national, uh, federal, county, state uh, type of database system that regulates the individual card owner in the event that they commit infractions? that it could be revoked or suspended or anything like that? So nothing national because it's still prohibited and illegal under federal law. So um, the feds aren't touching this. Uh, state, but uh, the county, state, their, their state license city. is also regulated, and the, the State Bureau of Cannabis Control has their own investigators, mm -hmm. um, and they are, are watching these places and working with the local jurisdictions. We've worked with some of the investigators as well, with some of the illegal ones. They'll be working with us to monitor the, the new legal ones too. And if there are concerns in addition to the CUP revocation and in addition to the uh, operating permit that's a prerequisite to this CUP, which can be revoked as well by the city, the state investigators can start an action to revoke their state license. And if they lose any one of those three, the state license, the city operating permit, or their CUP, if they lose any one of those three things, they're out of business. I was thinking more of the individual. Like the licenses kind of are all attached to an individual. Okay. Yeah, they they're not they can't be held by corporations or LLCs or or uh, invisible stakeholders. There is a there is a one in certain individual who is the applicant on each of these applications and licenses. No, I'm not talking about the applicant. I'm talking more in addressing uh, Tom's question. So person oh, goes a customer in, purchases. You're right, customer. Oh. They run into or they abuse it go out smoking or whatever where they're not supposed to, they get caught or whatever, can they lose that ability, ability to use to that card to purchase? I don't believe there's anything in the regulations at this point that, that monitors uh, an individual purchaser's ability to purchase. Because they have to have a card or or, or is it, because it's now you could just go in and purchase, right? Without having a without having a card. With ID, but, but yeah, you don't have to have a separate permit to purchase. <laughs> I, be I believe what Alvin's talking about is the medical card that everybody got so they could just go out there and purchase even illegally, just it's a medical marijuana card. That's going to be irrelevant in this yeah, context. Yeah, I know, but that's what, I, that's what he, was, he was speaking about, if they could get that revoked. I don't even think those cards were <laughs> really that big of a deal <laughs> myself. But I do know that what you're talking about, because I was told today by a resident how true it was, I don't know, but in Harupa Valley they did allow cannabis sales legally, and some of those have been shut down because I guess they were not doing what they were supposed to do. So I know that can happen. Um, I'm hoping the flip side is that <coughs> there is a homeless issue, and I know Tom <coughs> spoke of it because, on you know, we've got a lot of homeless people, and hopefully a lot of these uh, businesses, we can get enough revenue so we can address a lot of those issues. And maybe, you know, I mean, just in the future, um, we're testing the waters. We'll see how it goes, and hopefully everybody does what they're supposed to do, and even some of the um, people that are purchasing, um, can they, like, just be driving around smoking pot? I know driving under the influence of marijuana is the same as driving under the influence oh, of alcohol. Oh, is it? I don't know. See, I'm just asking a question. I didn't know if you, they, because they can purchase it and light up, like if they're lighting up a cigarette. <laughs> I mean, can they get pulled over? They can still get pulled over. So it's like drinking a beer in the car then. Okay, so it's a little different. I don't know. I don't. Okay, so they will enforce that, the police department? I'm they sure see. they'll continue to enforce driving under the influence, yes. Okay, because I don't know. Sometimes I'm driving down the street and I can, the car next to me reeks, so. <laughs> okay, well, enough of that. I think we've kind of covered everything. I think, you know. I think Commissioner Harris has a. Yeah, I, I was just going to say it, it is completely against the law to smoke or, or to consume cannabis in public anywhere in California. So you have to, you know, it, I, so anyway, that's all I wanted to say. Okay, any other uh, commissioner comments or deliberations? Joe? 
the applicant said it correctly, education is what's going to prevent things happening in the city of Moreno Valley. Education and every dispensary is bound to that, to educate their customers. Okay, do we have a uh, motion for this item? I move that we uh, approve resolution number 2019-41. I'll second that. Okay, we have a first and a second. Um, please cast your vote. It was approved 7-0. Congratulations, good luck on your project. Do we have a staff wrap up? Yes, this action is also an appealable action. Uh, any appeal that would be filed would need to be filed within 15 days, uh, directed to the community development director in writing with the appropriate fees, and if an appeal is received, it would be agendized for city council consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay, we'll uh, go on now to item number three, which is a not a cannabis. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Got to do a planned unit uh, development, the conditional use permit for a planned unit development. Uh, can we have the staff report, please? Julia, oh, sorry, Julia Descoto will present the staff report. Good evening. The applicant before us tonight is requesting an approval of a 20 unit, multi unit residential development called the Fur Garden Townhomes. The location is on Fir Avenue, just west of Paris Boulevard. <coughs> there are three parcels um, that have been merged into one lot now. They are across from the Sunnymead Park. The zoning there is uh, within the specific plan 204. It's village residential, which allows this use. The project as designed and conditioned is consistent with the goals, policies, and objectives of the general plan as well as the village plan and the city's municipal code for planned unit developments. The project is accessed from FER and it has a driveway that goes around the development which allows for access for fire as well as large vehicles. All of the units will have a two-car garage, and they are two-story units, four bedrooms. Each one will have their own private open space. Along with that, there are several um, open space areas for the residents in that development to use. One area is a picnic area with um, picnic uh, tables and barbecues. There'll be landscaping throughout the, the development as well as walking areas. Uh, it's a contemporary design with uh, two roof lines, two different types of buildings. The, most of the buildings will be duplexes. However, there'll be one a freestanding building and then the existing house that's on the site will be modified and updated to be consistent with this development. Um, these are the color combinations they've chose. Um, they have some entry front doors that will really kind of pop the, um, the front of the buildings. And um, it's, uh, to date, I have not had any uh, phone calls regarding the project. Um, the project is uh, categorically exempt as an infill project. And staff recommends that the Planning Commission approve resolution 2019-35 and certify that the um, project is exempt from CEQA and approve the planned <coughs> unit development conditional use permit. Um, before I, I wrap up, I'd like to go back a little bit to um, the proposed project being a conditional use permit for a planned unit development. The specific plan 204 allows for a variety of development in that area to um, try to encourage different types of development. And so with that, we're able to use different requirements within the municipal code and the, develop, uh, the specific plan to modify and to um, help facilitate development. 
So that's what we've done in this situation. So we're, it's a planned unit development with a conditional use permit. Um, thank you, and myself and the applicant are here to answer any questions for you. Thank you. Uh, do we have any uh, commissioner questions to staff at this point? Or, uh, commissioner Harris. Um, I, I was wondering, um, is it known at this point whether this project will have an HOA or will it have a, a, a special district for creating landscape around the project and maintaining it? It's a multi-unit development like an apartment complex with one owner. So the units are not individual for sale. Oh, I see. Okay. So they'll have to uh, maintain the um, site like an apartment complex would. It, they're just a different type of development. So it will be a special district then? That the it's not really a special district. It's just owned by one person who has to maintain it. Okay. Special district would be if the city maintains it. Right. Okay. Thank you. And so I, I assume that the fire department's looked at this layout and there's adequate turnaround and... Yes. Okay. And, and just as a, as a question, the green, I'm looking at the, the, the uh, or the, that's even a better picture of the landscape plan. So the, the, the little landscaped area between the duplexes, these are open to to the to everybody in, within the complex that's correct the private open space is to the rear of all of the units so they have in excess of our our code and the specific plan plan requires 150 square feet but all of these units have more than that the least amount is 231 square feet and it goes all the way up to about 900 square feet so they've done a really good job of trying to make sure that each unit has as much of private space as they can but still open space is required by the code as well and and we've made sure that's in there as well is, is there going to be block uh, is it a bl uh, per the perimeter fencing is it block or yes what's, it's okay. block wall perimeter around all three sides and is the front gate uh, gated or is that going to be so like it's a private right now they don't have a gate um, they do have certain requirements that they would have to meet with transportation if they wanted to put a gate thank you any other questions staff okay uh, we'll move on to uh, the applicant if they'd like to uh, present Good evening. Uh, my name is John Najad. I'm the project designer. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Any, any questions uh, of the applicant? It's easy for you tonight, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, you, it, I overheard her say that they they will not be for sale. That's correct. So these are all rental units. That's yeah. right. For about how much? I'm sorry. <laughs> as much as we can get. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. So, so it just so I assume there's going to be a master like a master water meter and and uh, you'll work out the water and stuff like that. That's correct. Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. Are they going to have a manager on site? Yes, there will be one manager. Actually, the uh, existing house is going to be the manager's residence. We are uh, we model that and make it uh, look like new, like the rest of the building. Thank you. Okay, any other uh, questions of the applicant? Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any uh, public speakers? We have one, Tom Jarrell. All right. Mr. Jarrell. Carol. Uh, Tom Jarrell, uh, again speaking 
So on behalf of the Sundance Center, I spent a bit of time and myself as a long-term resident. I've been Marina Valley since uh, 1981 completely, but I started looking at the uh, community very intently from 79 on, so I saw it right from its early inception. I've seen a lot happen, uh, both good and bad. Uh, I do one quick question. Uh, these units, uh, these buildings, are they going to at some point become for sale individually? we got individual property owners uh, because if that's the case, that's a real tricky situation there. That, that's a tough one. So that's something I think you should maybe ask the applicant of, um, you know, whether they'd be available to buy uh, these uh, malt bone. Uh, you just look at some of the areas in Edgemont and that's what you got and it makes it tough to police it. Uh, but the thing I wanted to, the primary reason I put a speaker slip in, I wanted to commend, uh, I'm going to say that the applicant, the developer, and also the uh, staff uh, did something very, very smart here consolidation of parcels. The biggest reason Central Sunnymead and Edgemont are the problems they are, and it's the most polite thing I can say, is the, the configuration of these long, narrow, skinny lots. And I see Commissioner uh, Chair Sims nodding. He knows, you know, they're very, very hard to do anything uh, intelligible that makes sense, uh, has much aesthetics to it. Uh, they actually become, you know, almost doomed from inception. So this was a really, really smart move, and I will uh, always say this is why we need redevelopment. When, when municipalities lost redevelopment uh, so many years ago, because that's the tool you need that can provide the financial tools to be able to do this with. So I mean, I know it's a side issue, but something to be aware of. And but that idea of the consolidation of parcels is uh, to be commended and encouraged. So and I think perhaps with uh, incentives to uh, you know legitimate developers want to bring projects for you, you'll get a better community. So that's my uh, comment. Thank you. Okay. <coughs> um, I don't see anybody else on the uh, public speakers. Do we have any more? No, sir. Okay. With that, then I'll uh, uh, close the public hearing portion of the, of the hearing and open it up to, uh, <coughs> to Commissioner comments. I... It would be my uh, addressing Mr. Chair Sims. Uh, you might there may be a rebuttal of the applicant. I don't. Oh, know. okay. Yeah, thank you. Um, would the applicant care to address Mr. Gerald's question about? Uh, ownership, I guess. Hi, my name is Deepak Maheshwari. Uh, I'm the uh, owner and developer of the project. Um, to address Mr. Gerald's comments, first of all, thank you for the kind words on the project uh, and the design. Uh, my project designers worked very hard on that. Um, secondly, we have no intention of uh, creating the HOA of any type or uh, selling them on an individual basis. Um, for I think for the community and for us, it would just make more sense to manage it ourselves and rent them out. Um, so I, I don't... I don't see uh, any conflict of interest there. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner, if I just might add to that, um, even if his intentions were to sell, they wouldn't be able to legally do so. Um, they would need to come in with an entirely new parcel map. It would all be have to be separately uh, parceled out and approved by the city land development, this commission. They'd have to create an HOA. So there's a number of things that would have to happen should they ever want to sell. Yeah. But Thank you. Well, I, I'll, I'll uh, start off on this one. I, I think it's a great project. The uh, it's it looks like it, it is very well thought out, and um, you know this is packing a lot of stuff in a small small area, but it it looks like it's done well. Um, and I, I you know and I I, I tend to agree with, with uh, Mr. Gerald's comment about these skinny little lo skinny long lots. They uh, <laughs> that's probably legacy planning that uh, done from the county and uh, you get what you get when you got it and so now we got it so it's I do this is the kind of stuff within the specific plans and things like that that it's good to see developers and staff working together to try to massage and, and use the municipal code to come up with you know viable projects because this this kind of stuff revitalizes you know it could be a seed to start you know you know, one guy see it and one developer do it and others see it and, you know, you might see some uh, renovation in that area. So, yeah, you know, I, I, I like it and I, I'm going to, I believe I'm probably going to be f in favor of it. Anyhow, <coughs> others have any comments? 
deliberations? I do, sir. Um, I want to thank the staff for the report, but I also want to thank the fire marshal and the fire department for getting involved because they have 24 conditions that the applicant must abide by. And when I see projects like this, like apartments or development, I always think about safety because they need to get in, take care of the problem, whether it's the ambulance or the fire department, the trash company, whatever, or the delivery trucks, I look at safety. And I'm glad there's 24 conditions for the fire department to hold the applicant accountable. I also am glad that the applicant stated himself that he's not selling the property at all. They're rentals. And they're going to be living on the property so they can manage them themselves. So that's a good thing. I'm also glad that they're using the materials that are on the back of the pages that with the limestones and the, uh, the, the roofing. So this project, this, these apartments are going to make a big difference on this lot especially across the street from the softball field. So FUR is getting a makeover, and that's a good thing. It's close to everything. It's close to Stater Brothers, the Atlantas, this, the freeway. It's a good location. And I hope that other applicants that are, or other property owners that have small lots, as they call them small, they can be vital to many people in the city of Moreno Valley, when you built apartments, there are great designers out there that can put anything in a small hole. So don't be afraid to do those things. And I'm glad that the applicant stepped out. And I hope that, like Commissioner Sin mentioned, that others will follow. Hey, I, you know, uh, Commissioner Bre uh, Bregaris, I. Uh, I, this is the second, I think, project on Fur Street, if I recall. I, I, is it Fur or there was one of the other streets and right, right close to this where we approved a senior apartment complex, if, if I recall, just two, three months ago. So maybe the seeds have been planted. So keep our fingers crossed. Any other uh, deliberations or looking for a motion? Okay. Motion would be good. I'll make a motion. <laughs> Move uh, along. Um, I recommend that we approve resolution number 2019-35. I'll second. All right. We have a first and a second. Can we uh, cast our votes? Okay. It's approved 7-0. Good luck on your project. Do we have staff report or what wrap up? <laughs> wrap up. Uh, the Planning Commission's action tonight is appealable. Any appeal would need to be filed within 15 days, directed to the Community Development Director in writing with the appropriate fee. An appeal would be advertised before the Planning, excuse me, the City Council for consideration. Great. Thank you. Okay. We're cooking along here. We're on to item four, which is a plot plan for a multifamily residential unit. Development, excuse me. Uh, can we have a staff report, please? This item will be presented by Gabriel Diaz. All right. Thank you, Chairman and Commissioners. The project, the project is located on Edgemont Street, uh, south of Eucalyptus Avenue, and north of Dracia. The project zone is residential 10, multifamily R10. Uh, I did read in the staff report, uh, this gets edited throughout by uh, various people, uh, and I read it somewhere that it said that the general plan was R15, and the general plan designation is RO, uh, which is residential office. I just wanted to clarify that. The applicant is requesting approval for a plot plan for the development of an 18-unit multifamily residential complex on 1.86 net acres and 
2.26 acres of storm drain and sewer easements on the adjacent two properties to the east, I mean to the west. And that's what we see on this surrounding map. On the site plan, the proposed project uh, proposes four unit, four four unit buildings and one two unit building, uh, all one story. All 18 units are, consist of two bedrooms, two baths, washer and dryer, and a total living area of 1,035 square feet. The project does provide common open space that includes picnic tables and barbecue areas. Each unit includes 154 square feet of private open space. Uh, the minimum private open space is 150. Uh, there is no community buildings uh, or manager's office on site. And I know you were asking those type of questions before for the previous project. Parking for the development will include a combination of attached two car garages uh, for each unit and six surface parking spaces for guests meeting the minimum requirement per our municipal code. Access to the project is from one driveway off access uh, from Edgemont Street. Internal circulation is within uh, a 24 foot wide driveway aisle and there is a turnaround at the end of the project uh, for, for the fire department and for the, the trash trucks. The design of the buildings include a variety of colors and architectural features to break up the massing and provide visual interest. These, de these details include painted wood fascia, foam window seals, covered private entrances, exterior columns and trellises. Variation about, uh, among the buildings is also included between the mixture of two and four unit buildings. On the two buildings fronting on Edgemont, the applicant has, has worked with, with us uh, to try to make them fit the single family homes directly across the street. So they're kind of more narrow. Uh, you can, this is the four unit, the two unit, uh, but on the ends you can see they're, they kind of have that old school smaller home uh, which is across the street. Planning, environmentally, planning staff has reviewed and determined this, this project is, uh, qualifies as a class 32 clerical, categorical exemption infill project section 15332 under the provisions of the California Environmental Quality Act. Public notice was sent to all property owners posted on the site, published in the Press, Enter Press Enterprise newspaper. I did receive one call from a adjacent neighbor and they weren't really too concerned. They didn't have a say as far as pro or against the project, but just kind of uh, were kind of had questions about the development. This is a material sample board and staff recommendation. Staff recommends that the planning commission take the recommended actions as proposed by staff. Thank you. Do you have any questions? Do we have uh, questions of staff? Well, I, I have a couple. Is the uh, perimeter fencing going to, what's the perimeter fencing going to be? It's uh, pilasters with wrought iron. And then there, this not a part, this parcel that's not a part, is there an existing home in there? already or how's that going to work now i believe it's vacant it's just vacant property we, we did it, it is included in your staff report uh, staff uh, did try to have or did have a meeting with the adjacent landowner and the current property owner for this project and we tried to have them work together so like the previous project before you combine them you have a better project you don't have a leftover piece it's better planning uh, it, it unfortunately that we were unable to make that happen so the the fencing that's going to be this little uh, slot that 
Uh, what's the width of that? That's uh, this 50 foot lot. Pretty narrow, yeah. So is that is going to be fenced off with a uh, wrought iron? And how's the grading going to work? I, I, I didn't see a grading plan, but is, is that going to work where? I think the edges, uh, yeah, it goes downhill. Edgemont is uh, probably the high point, and then it go, goes downhill. So as far as neighbor to neighbor, uh, the everything around the project, they've done a good job of, I think on the southern end is where you have the biggest difference, which is uh, two foot difference. So, well, I guess my question is, is so there's going to, is the toe of the slopes that are between built, you know, like behind building two, is there just going to be a slope going, you know, well, maybe that's a question for the applicant when they get up, but uh, anyhow, it just seems like you're going to have buildings and sh down to this property, but I guess you have to do what you have to do or build a retaining wall, I suppose. Anyhow, that's my questions. Is this area where the, is the water? I thought. Who? Yes, this is uh, within the Box Springs uh, Water Company. And uh, it passed the fire flow. There was sufficient fire flow. Really? Uh, I believe the applicant did one earlier uh, when they submitted the project, and they did another one more recently. Uh, fire, fire approved the project. <laughs> they approved, okay. <laughs> Well, we it, it meets the minimum requirements. So. <laughs> okay, I, that was my question because I've lived here for 35 years and I know exactly what's going on over there. <laughs> so it's kind of like I was wondering how they could, I don't know. Well, you well gotta, there's oh. a, to the north, north, east, east, uh, there's a new development and I, I believe as new development comes in, new funds and, and new infrastructure is, being put in randomly through there. I don't know exactly where, but I do see digging when I drive through some of those streets. Okay. Okay. I was just cons I was just wondering. Uh, is there <coughs> are the buildings all going to be sprinkled? I, I would assume so. Uh, that's a fire department or building question. Any other questions? Staff? All right, it's time to hear from the applicant. Good evening, Chairman Sims, Planning Commissioners. My name is Joseph Halasik. I represent NOAA Group Architects. I'm one of the principals there. And um, I, you've brought up several points, but I'll try to touch on them all briefly and, and make myself available for, for further questions if you'd like. Um, we've been working in Moreno Valley and um, have believed in it for many years. We started with Day Center, which is just up the road off the 60, and I'm really heartened to see that development has worked its way all the way down to this project site. And more recently, we finished the Stone Ridge Town Center, which we're extremely proud of to this day. Um, this started out as a simple residential project. It actually turned into a fairly long-term complex residential project. As Gabriel mentioned, the first thing that we were requested to do when we had our initial pre-app planning meeting was to negotiate with the landowner of this little sliver parcel that juts into the property. We spent several months trying to negotiate a deal. It just, it just wasn't doable. We felt also that it would have improved the property and we would have loved to see it happen. It just, it just didn't. Uh, we spent a lot of time working with Box Springs Water, who uh, fortunately had recently, during the course of the project, extended a 12-inch water main past our project. It was part of the project that was done up the road, the uh, uh, larger apartment project that was done up the road. We have great water pressure and great flow duration. We were happy to see that. Um, Following that, we discovered that we have some issues because of the topography of the site with the sewer connection. Uh, the site falls away, 
and the sewer is not that deep in Edgemont, so we had quite a few issues to overcome with that. And we also had hydrology issues. We had very low percolation rates, and the one of the neighbors to the south of us had built a CMU retaining wall that basically blocked our water flow. As a consequence of some of these problems, we actually, my client actually uh, and I, found the property owner for the adjacent parcel to the east on which we have the easements and we negotiated a purchase of that property. Um, that solved significant issues with our sewer because it has a sewer line through it and with our uh, storm drainage because we can go divert our storm drainage through that property and it also is enabling us to do a much larger development. We're currently in initial planning stages for a 51 unit development on that property and when it's complete it will act as one larger we think very nice development. Um, I think that we have been successful to solve all of the issues and it, we have our engineers Winchester Associates here for any technical questions regarding the grading. I believe one of the commissioners asked about how the slopes are handled. Um, we have two to one very minor graded slope banks that transition lot to lot and building to building. Uh, we followed the topography of the, land, of the land. We did not want to have a large import or export situation. We, in all, for all intents and purposes, have a balanced site right now. Um, the wrought iron and stone fencing works well with the topography of the site because obviously if you have these pilasters, you can step your fencing down and up quite easily, uh, much better than you can do it with a solid wood fence or some sort of other fence like that. It, it, it lends itself much better to it. We want it to be one story because we feel that that works better for the market. There's a, you know, a lot of development going on around there and we also feel it's in better character with the neighborhood. So uh, I make myself available for questions and my engineer again is here if you'd like any further questions of them. Thank you so much. I, I have a question on the, the uh, common open space that's kind of on the south side of the project. I guess that's the south. Yeah. On the other side of the not apart, is that it shows a driveway approach. So is that a secondary access or emergency access? Uh, Where the uh, looks like there's the common open space here. Uh, yeah, from Edgemont going on to the property. Right, so we initially had thought, just when we first looked at the property, that that would become a, a, a looped road. Unfortunately, that didn't work with the city's coverage requirements and open space and landscape requirements. So we turned it into kind of a park-like finger, if you will. Uh, we envisioned that that's a great place where tenants may be able to walk their dogs or let them run freely and play while they're there supervising. And we're, we are creating some nice uh, decomposed granite paths with some nice landscaping and seating areas and so forth. So that is definitely an amenity to the project. It's not a fire lane or an access lane, but we have actually two fire department compliant hammerhead turnarounds on the property. It so was a challenging site. Yeah. The, uh, <coughs> did you, uh, when you did your, you know, uh, building pad layouts and so forth, if at some point in the future, the neighbor that owns the parcel that's not a part, is there a way, did, will your footprints fit somehow in, you know, fit on there where you could, you know, continue this project if you came in and did a modification to this or do another plot plan? Yes, certainly. So consolidate the lot lines or something yeah, like yes, that? Yes, absolutely. Okay. It so is a consideration. Yes. Okay. And we were very hopeful that we would be able to acquire that property because we do feel it made it better. But we also feel that we have a successful project with that with that sliver of land in the in the middle of it, as it were. Well, never is a long time, so you never know. We never know. <laughs> so just keep talking. Mm -hmm. it, it'll, uh, maybe it'll come around. Any other uh, questions, Abby? Um, I just wanted to make it uh, clear. That little sliver there, if the owner of that were to change his mind in the future, would that actually still be, after all this is built out, will it still be 
uh, something that you would be interested in, or is it like once it's built out, is it, oh, you know, you can't do it. You can't do anything with that little sliver. No, we certainly could, and my client is present as well, and he just nodded his head, yes, he would be interested oh, in that okay. sliver. Okay. And and the site plan does lend itself to it. We have a driveway that goes to here. Yeah. And all the utilities are size, uh, it's whatever, eight inch pipes or whatever you're doing, going off site to connect the utilities. Yes. They're all, um, they'd, they'd be adequate. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, okay. Sewer, water, and storm. Okay. And we're actually, we've actually completed at risk most of the construction documents, and we're going to be submitting final engineering plans as early as next week, and we hope to be proceeding with our second phase of the adjacent property to the west in short order. We're very excited about this development and the, and the, and the adjacent development. Any other questions of applicant? I have a question, sir. Yep. Mr. Diaz mentioned that there's going to be a management building or, or office. So is there going to be a crew to maintain the property, to clean it? Yes, absolutely. All of the, all of the landscape maintenance and utility maintenance will be hired. And then when we do do the adjacent development, it has a fairly centrally located management office, which will have a permanent resident manager. This is a little bit too small to have that, although there may be some shared rent and management responsibilities with one of the tenants. That's always a possibility for a kind of a mid-sized project like this. That's great. I'm just considering the safety of the of the residents that live there. Yes, sir. Sometimes you need an an overseer. Yes, sir. To make decisions. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying. I I agree with that completely. Thank you. Any other questions, applicant? Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Do we have uh, any uh, speakers from the public? Yes, sir. We have two. I, I, I can't see who, who we have. Tom Gerald and Brenda Addy. Mr. Gerald. Tom Gerald, again, speaking on behalf of myself as a long-term resident of the city, a little bit in our commercial interest here. Uh, I support the project. Uh, you know, it's another case of uh, making the best of a tough situation with the lot configurations. I spoke at in the la on the last uh, project there, and you can see, you know, the issues there, you know, what a headache it is. And, and again, uh, uh, beat the drum on redevelopment. That provides, you know, perhaps financial incentives that might uh, pop that deal. So could have done that consolidation there. Uh, it's a great tool, and you know we really need it. Uh, it's a finance tool, but it's it integrates so well with your planning and allows you to do better projects. So I fill that for your own uh, knowledge, but I do support the project. It was a good uh, uh, good uh, design for what they have. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Miss Addy. My name is Brenda Addy. I've lived in this general area since 1975. I live off of Dracia, and I think that's probably going to be part of their future um, projects. Um, I'm in favor of the project. I think it's great because uh, any development in Edgemont that's getting it on, well, Moreno Valley slash, <laughs> I hate calling it Edgemont because we are part of it, Moreno Valley, um, is a great thing. Um, but I'm concerned about two things, and that's the homeless. We have a ton of homeless and dumping, illegal trash dumping. Well, actually, three things, and off-site parking. Edgemont Street is getting ridiculous to go down. When they built the apartments at Eucalyptus and Edgemont Street, there's, I guess there's probably they figured out the parking according to the city plans, but... There's 
still tons of people parking on Edgemont Street. And in the morning when you have to take a child to school, you're, you're circulating around cars, kids, strollers, chopping carts. <laughs> and um, that was just my biggest concern because with that little empty lot, I know he said that they're gonna have offsite um, and that's not his property to keep control of, but I can see that becoming a problem because um, the homeless had already been living on this particular piece of property and then they got them out, but they also live in vehicles along Edgemont Street. And, um, and I don't know what's going on with this other skinny lot on the other side of the project but there is a lot of these little sites and there's people that think they could hold on to them and going to get major big bucks down the road for them because they see a little bit of development going on and they want to see what they can all the money they can get but um my biggest concern is is mainly parking because the danger in there for kids coming and going to school because there is no sidewalk until you get up to those uh, part new apartments. Thank you very much. Any other, it uh, doesn't appear there's any other uh, speakers? No, sir, no more speakers. Okay, so I will close the public hearing portion of the, uh, of the uh, item. Is there, would the uh, applicant like to respond to any of the comments? Thank you. Uh, we share her concerns. The parcel, the little sliver parcel, did have a homeless person living on it, and we immediately, as soon as we found out about it, uh, had the property fenced. I hope there will be a fence across the front of that little sliver parcel. There will certainly be a fence around three sides of it. I think that homelessness decreases when quality development goes in. And that's certainly going to be the case as, as the uh, new apartment down up the street from us and we and then the future developments occur we have curb and gutter and sidewalk in front of this development so you know there won't be the dirt lot where you can just pull off and park anywhere you want anymore and this will be well lit and it will have uh, fairly constant supervision among the neighbors or the the tenants rather and the people who manage it so we don't intend to let the property to, to let the property degrade we intend to keep it Keep it in good good order. That's in everyone's best interest. Okay, thank but you I very do much. Agree with this lady. Thanks. Yeah. Okay, well, I think we're at that point of the evening where we get to deliberate, but we can begin deliberating. I th I think it's a good project for the area. Like they said, it's been a very depressed area for a long time, and. Um, Maybe by getting new projects in there. I know the apartments went in, and I really feel for her because of the fact that I do see a lot of cars there. I go down there myself because uh, I take my mom to a medical clinic that's close to there, and then I kind of jog through there. And I know that there is an issue. And then there is an issue with the homeless all through the city. And with new development coming in to this area, my, my concern was actually the uh, infrastructure, but they seem to, you know, it like a, just keep adding new and new and new, and before you know it, it'll, you know, just branch off. So that's a good thing. Um, I'm inclined to um, approve the project. Um, I just uh, hope that some of the other issues can be addressed and taken care of. Okay, um, I really like the design of it. I think a lot of thought went into making this fit into the neighborhood. I like the one-story design. I like everything about it. I think it would be an asset to that area to help bring more of this development through. So um, kudos, it could have been made more simple probably and maybe not as attractive looking, but I do like the planning that went into this. So I am going to vote for approval. I, I, I like it myself uh, as well, and I, I, some of the 
I tend to agree that uh, with development, that uh, there, there's a, still seems like there's quite a bit of uh, vacant property in the Box Springs area. So hopefully as time moves forward, um, I, I, you know, there's multiple issues. I think that's a legacy area of a legacy planning uh, uh, issues from uh, the past. And, you know, the Moreno Valley was county for a long time. So it, it's going to take time to, to turn it over in, in some of these areas like this. I think that's working against Box Springs and also the uh, the water the mutual water company out there. That that's uh, a tough a tough situation. And from my past experience, that that is a big problem. But I think with development and if if hopefully the Box Springs Mutual has their c capacity fees or connection fees appropriately with some master planning, that they can start you know doing the work and uh, improving that area. So. Because I, I think if there was water, that's a great location. It's just a matter of getting getting the facilities built. But um, I think for for what you have there, with you know not being able to get that little sliver property, I think it was a it's well thought out project. So um, I echo what our other commissioners are saying. Anybody else, Rafael? Yes, sir. I want to thank the applicant for picking that spot to build the units. Because the, just the material alone would enhance the neighborhood. The one-story look would blend in with the rest of the houses and everything around there. So that's a good thing. The other good thing is it's going to be lit. When there's a lot of light, you'll have less people parking in the street. And that's what we want. We want to make the raw land dirt into sidewalks. And when you put sidewalks, you put street lights. And that makes it difficult for someone to park. You know, and it also makes it easier for law enforcement to spot them. And that's, you know, that's the only way that you're gonna get things done. You know, I know that we I know we have a homeless problem and I know people live in cars. But some places they get out of hand and people throw trash all over the place, and they think it's theirs, and they don't care about nobody else but themselves. And the only way that we're gonna solve a problem is development, to bring in things so we can make the raw land into concrete and put lighting as they are doing. I like the project. It's going to enhance the neighborhood. Any other? Uh Comments? Commissioner Harris. Um, I was just thinking that I, I thought I saw somewhere, and I don't know, I couldn't find it, but uh, that this was going to be named Edgemont something. No? No? That, like Edgemont Gardens or something? No? Maybe I'm wrong. It's Marvin Garden, yeah. Uh, I, I think the developers here, and uh, he could provide a name if they're if they're proposing one, but uh, I'm not aware there is one. Okay. I, I just hope that we could, you know, kind of rebrand that area and not remind people that it was Edgemont. <laughs> it's a suburb of Moreno Valley. Yeah, yeah no, it's a, commu it's a community of Moreno Valley. Can I make one general comment here? You're, you're oh, no, no, Mr. I'm Chair, sorry. may I speak for a second? Sure. My client, Mr. Patel, just said, uh, if you guys have any suggestions, we're open to the idea of naming. He had not thought of a name for oh, it okay. yet, as of yet. I don't know but if we're, we're open at that. <laughs> yeah. Commissioner Baker. You know, I just want to make a general comment here. Um, I, I like this development, and the, the thing I like tonight, we filled in two infill projects, which these lots have been vacant a number of years. And then also on these cannabis deals, we're filling up a lot of buildings that have been vacant here probably 10, 15 years, which I think is going to end up being a good thing uh, overall. So I think we're pushing this from a development standpoint the right direction, and I like it, uh, and I'll vote for this project. Okay. Well, do you have a motion in your back pocket for this? I would could. Let me find <laughs> it. Yeah, I will. Uh, well... I, I had one more comment. Oh, yeah, oh one I'm, more. Sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, you just hold on. Okay. There and, and 
Um, I was listening to her comments, and I'm, I'm looking at and great. Yes, we are building. We're growing. And it's a great thing. I happened to live in that area when I was much younger, uh, way back in 71. Um, but I was thinking about that um, as we're growing and as we're putting in new buildings and new apartment buildings <coughs> and, and we're, we're making these areas more and more denser, I, I wonder what the city plan in response to, I don't know how they uh, decide parking, no parking, that sort of thing. Is it a density rating? Is it a amount of uh, houses that go in a certain area or people that live in a certain area to address the growth that we're starting to to have in Moreno Valley to 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 respond to the the parking needs or or to overcrowd a street or to uh, is there some type of formula that goes into it to say hey wait a second we're putting too many people on the street here our zoning code does have formulas for parking for counting required parking so it's generally based on a uh, number of bedrooms there's parking for single family homes versus multifamily so our planners when they're reviewing the projects do look to the zoning ordinance to determine how much parking is required um, there are some exceptions but they're minor and they don't apply in too many cases so um, yeah we have formulas that we use okay so in response or eventually it'll get to the point where they say hey we're just putting too many cars out on the street here as far as parking is concerned on I Edgemont or something like that. I think we have a parking traffic and streets commission. Right. Mm. I think they can paint red stripes or red, uh, <laughs> red or paint. Red curb or something there. <laughs> if I recall, I think I was on that commission for <laughs> several years. We do have public works staff here. <laughs> So the Traffic Safety Commission, yes, you were on that board and you did a fine job. So thank you. Thank you. Um, so parking is on these type of streets is typically um, first come, first serve. So if there's room to park in between driveways, but we, we typically wouldn't restrict parking on a residential street when you have front loaded houses. It's a big community issue because there's oftentimes not enough um, spaces on the lot. I mean, although they're, they're, the zoning is there, people have more cars than was intended for the zone. So they're often parking in the street, but when there's curb and gutter, then the street sweepers come by, you know, once a week or once every two weeks, and then they have to find other places for them. But generally, they're allowed on residential streets. It seems to me we had a discussion about parking at a certain uh, affordable housing apartment complex that <clears throat> got 40% less parking than it. Uh, hmm. Ready for motion? Do, yeah, did you still keep that motion? I don't, it's still in my back pocket. Let's go. <laughs> I, uh, I move that we approve resolution 2019 42 and thereby certify that plot plan PEN. 18-0064 is categorically exempt from the provisions of the California Environment, Environmental Quality Act CEQA as a Class 32 exemption CEQA guidelines section 15332 infill development project and also approved plot plan PEN 18-0064 based on the findings contained in this resolution and subject to the attached conditions of approval included as Exhibit A. Do we have a second? I'll second. Okay. Commissioner Baker, Commissioner Stevens. First and second. Cast your vote. Congratulations, approved 7-0. Good luck on your project. Okay, staff wrap up, please. This action is appealable. An appeal would need to be filed within 15 days, directed to the community development director in writing with the appropriate fee. Any appeal would be agendized for city council consideration. <coughs> Thank you. Okay, the next item is uh, staff comments. Do we have any staff comments? I have none. Commissioner comments. I have one. Go ahead. Oh, I just I just had a question. Um, in January, the state is going to require new housing to have solar panels. Does that affect things that are in process right now, or just new things that are going to be designed? And does it include 
this, these type of projects, or is it primarily just like a single family residence? Are you guys aware of that? <laughs> I, I'm just um, curious. I don't. I'm <laughs> curious how it affects some of the projects that we've start that have been started, or is it all for things that haven't been planned yet? It's for uh, applications that come in after the first. If they're in the development chain already, they're, it, it, they're not part of that. Okay, so anything new, nothing that has been started. Okay. That's correct. Thank you. I notice that there's uh, resurfacing of the paving in, uh, in my area, so you'll <laughs> quit hearing me complain. So uh, <laughs> I'm happy. That's good. Potholes, right? Yeah, well, I, I must send a bill for all the alignments I've had to have done. I'm like, I'm just joking. Anyhow, um, and th did we ever, I think I, I keep asking this, but what did, do we know what's going on with the renovation of the Moreno Valley Ranch golf course? Is that, do, is there any updates to that or? No. It's unknown. Uh, it's, it's still in progress. Uh, there's been, uh, there's, we're, Working out some fine details on a couple aspects of, of the of the some cha possible changes to minor changes to the plan where some amenities are going to be located or uh, the clubhouse shape and direction, but um, it's still moving forward and going through the development process and the and plan check review. Good. All right. Any other? I have one. Uh, the word fencing was mentioned tonight. Our property owners obligated to fence their property when they're not in use because that can avoid a lot of the homeless from planting their tents and everything on these properties. Only if they have a swimming pool. There's no requirement that you have fencing around your property unless you have a swimming pool. Interesting. <laughs> Thank you. I do have one one other question. So I, I live out at the East End and, and fairly close to the new, that Prologis development that was a, approved. And I, I think there's like a Solaris paper or, or something in there. And one of my neighbors came up to me and they they, uh, there's, they hear like a humming sound, like a humming sound from the building. Like anyhow, and then driving by on, driving by on the freeway, it looks like there's big... Uh, like a dust collection system or something that's outside the buildings. So, so yeah, what I told my neighbor, I said, I think that's a, we just approved, the planning department just looks at the, the building, the land use, box fits all the, you know, whatever fits setbacks, so forth, so on, and the land use, and if it gets approved, it gets approved. And But once it goes to, once it goes into a, lots of planning goes into building, the building department is the one that looks at the noise levels and amenities that they're going to have on the building. Is that correct? Is that where that all happens? Uh, we do have noise standards in the zoning ordinance. So normally when an application is coming through, we're looking at all the different components of it. Um, it's possible that something is occurring that wasn't anticipated. So. Um, yeah, I, I, yeah, I just was curious. So, but it goes to the, is it, is it a building? It, I just, from a, from, to direct my neighbor, is it something that they just should talk to the, the if building it's, department? If it's after, uh, it, during operation, they should refer their uh, issues to code enforcement at this okay. point. Okay, all right, thank you. All right, any other questions, comments, staff? Okay. All right, then at this time, the planning commission meeting is adjourned at 840 and to our next regular meeting on December 12th as, uh, as our meeting schedule for November 28th will be canceled due to the Thanksgiving holiday. So everybody have a good night.